This is a 40% keyboard. More specifically, this is an ortholinear keyboard. For a long time, I've been a supporter of the smaller keyboards. They're cheaper, often you get better specs at a much lower price, and plus, a lot of them just look really nice. If you need more keys, just make another layer. Or so they say. Well, from today to 30 days from now, I'm going to be doing everything from editing, speed typing, playing games, or whatever other fun things I usually do with this keyboard to essentially try and push it to the limit to answer the simple question, is it worth it and should it even be done? Now, the very first thing I have to do, of course, is to build the keyboard. And while we're doing that in the background, let me explain how this is going to work. In essence, 30 days is still quite a long time, so what I'm going to do is essentially make updates every week. And each week, I am going to try, maybe every two weeks, I'm going to try to essentially test a different part of the keyboard. Now, in addition to this, this video sort of serves as a part two to my previous ortholinear keyboards video. Building this thing was actually quite fun, with the exception of messing up the firmware and having to completely disassemble and assemble it again. But to generally overview the process, it was very simple. All the parts worked in pretty well. I was actually surprised by the quality of the case because it was just about $50 and it feels quite good. They even included extra feet so you can decide on basically two heights. Sure, it's not adjustable, but you get what you pay for. It's fully aluminum and everything works pretty damn well. As for setting up this keyboard, the reason I had so much problem with the firmware is that this specific board is supported on VIA. The only difference is that you have to reflash the board. All right, so this is gonna be the general process for getting VIA to work on this keyboard if you decide to buy it. I believe by default, it should have that firmware already installed. However, I'm not sure because mine, I just messed up QMK, I didn't test it before. So just in case it doesn't work, you try to VIA, it doesn't show up, here's what you do. So you go to the downloads tab on their website, you go to BM series and you go to VIA. You go to the VIA firmware and then you have to select either one or two. This would be on the back of your PCB. Mine is version two. So go ahead and go to BM40 and then download the hex file. So after downloading the hex file, you just open something like QMK tool box, and then you just flash it onto your keyboard. And after that, this is an important one. You have to download this JSON file. This JSON file is, I believe the definitions for VIA. You go onto something like VIA, use VIA. Um, If I go ahead and plug in my VIA, uh, my VM40 keyboard. Authorized device, VM40 V2. You're going to end up with an error. Fetching definitions failed. This keyboard doesn't have definitions by default. It's still using V2 definition, so it's um, outdated. But what you do is you go into, I believe, which one was it? Oh yeah, you go to settings. Designer tab, confirm, and then load draft definitions. And then make sure you also select V2. Upload that JSON file and it should let you edit your keyboard. With the keyboard building done, we can finally test out this keyboard for the first time. Now for me personally, this was actually the most interesting part. While preparing for this video, I watched a lot of other people try ortholinear keyboards, and most of them had huge trouble switching to this keyboard. Now, when I first got my Iris Revision keyboard, which is in a column staggered layout instead of the standard staggered layout, people also had problems with that. So when I tried it, I was quite surprised that like it worked perfectly for me. I had absolutely no problems, whether that's because I learned Colmac or whatever, a different keyboard layout, who knows. Thus, for me, going to an ortholinear keyboard I thought that I would also not have any problems, because it kind of is just a column staggered keyboard, just mushed together. Yeah, I was dead wrong. Whatever happened from staggered to column staggered is absolutely nothing like ortholinear. Here, just take a look for yourself.
yeah, that was really, really rough. And the interesting thing is, it, is that it only occurred on my left hand. But if you really think about it, that makes sense. On a staggered keyboard, you can check out my video here for the full explanation, but in essence, on a staggered keyboard, all your, key, all your fingers shift slightly towards the bottom right when you type the keys on the bottom row. On an ortholinear keyboard, in theory, it should be like a column staggered keyboard where you just move your fingers down. So it should generally be okay. However, ortholinear keyboards, because of their design, your hands kind of end up in a upside down V. And what results from this is essentially your fingers moving down towards the left, instead of down towards the right. So what this results in is a lot of mispresses. Now personally, I didn't have a lot of problems with my pinky, ring, or middle, but my index finger I had a lot of trouble. On my layout was the K and the V key, and on the standard QWERTY that would be the D and the V key. Now after about a week, Yes, it did take a week for me. Um, if I really tried to use this keyboard fully, it would probably only take me a day. But I wanted to see how it was like for maybe a more casual user who's gonna use this keyboard a bit, maybe swap to their laptop keyboard and then swap back, etc. After about a week, I was pretty comfortable with it. However, I still had quite a lot of trouble when it came to some of the special characters. Now, here's the layout I used. I designed this myself. But even as the person who designed this layout, I still was a little bit awkward on some of the keys. And that's just primarily because your muscle memory is quite strong. And when you try and change that muscle memory, plus then having keys changed, it's quite rough. But after about the second week, I was comfortable-ish using the first layer. So after about two weeks, I've gotten fully comfortable with this keyboard, or at least with the first layer. And yes, it did actually take two weeks for me. I didn't spend as much effort as I suppose I usually did when it comes to learning a new layout, because I wanted a little bit more of a casual perspective, you could say. That means about on the first bit of the fourth week, I decided, okay, let's finally try this thing out for more than just typing. So I decided to try and edit the video with it. So here's the video you might already see on my channel. A couple minutes of finessing later. Fixed it. I guess the single comma definition doesn't work on macOS, which kind of makes sense. So obviously this was kind of an anticlimactic test. It's not like it's testing anything special or really pushing the limits of this keyboard. In general, this is going to work fine for essay writing, script writing, because that's literally the whole point of our keyboard. So if it can't do that, then it's, you can't even really call it a keyboard. But in general, it had really no problems doing this. The only problem that I would mention would be the use of special characters. So like, for example, I didn't have a smaller than sign, which I use quite a lot in my script writing. So I had to go back and add that in via, but overall worked well. One other funny thing is that make sure you have an exclamation mark. Because this keyboard doesn't have a number row, you can't shift press 1 to get an exclamation mark. And this is universal for all the other symbols. So in short, yeah, it works. It, it, it has to work. I mean, yeah. So what I did was I typed the script, edited the video, did everything on this keyboard. Let me tell you, it is not fun. The main issue I had was with the cut key. Now, on my layout, it is actually on two different sides of the board. And what I would do is essentially just move my keyboard or in my keyboard in the correct way so that I could just use one hand if I wanted to. But overall, it was not much of a problem. On an ortholinear keyboard, the problem was not the distance because the keys are matched together. That's actually closer. The problem was the control key. The control key is here. This means I have to bend my thumb all the way there to press that or I have to come up with some weird finger gymnastics type thing to get it. This is fine. It, it, it's okay, but it's just annoying and it's a good heads up for you. Now, personally for DaVinci, I'm not much of a pro user. I don't know all the shortcuts and all that kind of stuff. So it worked well for me, but if you're in using any kind of professional situation, I don't recommend this. It's not going to work very well. 
but as you can see, it did out, it did successfully complete the task. Everything did work. It took a little while to write the YouTube title and description because I couldn't find a lot of the keys I needed, but overall, it does the job. With about four days left, this is where we get onto some of the serious stuff. Now, we do a lot of things with our keyboard, so much so that a lot of the things we do commonly, we just take for granted. For example, gaming. Now that I'm more, more or less comfortable with this keyboard, I'm gonna finally try to play some games with it. Now, I would love to record something like Counter-Strike, but one, I suck, and two, I'm pretty sure the frame rate will be really bad because I'm playing on a Mac. So, yeah. You guys will be able to enjoy this game. It's called World of Tanks Blitz. Oh, nice. Uh, so the biggest problem, first of all, is that also this game is okay for testing because it has a lot of, um, a lot of keys you need to press. So if you go to my controls, you can see there's quite a lot of keys. Let's, let's give this a try. Um, I don't want to ruin anyone else's stats or really mine, so we're just going to go with the fun mode. Let us play... Eh, the object, why not? So basically this game, luckily, is more mouse. I don't really play MMO games, so I can't say anything for that. But if you do play those kind of games, I don't think you would want to... Um, I don't think you would want to get that, regardless. Also, I just realized my game audio isn't recording, so sorry guys, I'll fix that in a second. Interesting lineup. 1, 2, 1, B. I don't really like this map for anyone who plays this game. I don't, I don't like this map for TDs because you just can kind of get shot through the bushes. 50B gets spotted. Ooh, yes, yes, please. Nice. And then back up, back up, back up. Yeah, our E100 is just going to bully that guy. Nice. Alright, so, 50B, gonna clip out and clip him out probably. So we take pretty now, nah, okay. Yes, D30, poke that, nice. Okay, so immediately my adrenaline key is Y, and I don't know, okay, that one's the bottom one. We got a 4005 so far. Definitely, I need to rebuild this into my muscle memory, but, ooh, ouch. That's okay, I guess. Nice, back up. Okay, I'm gonna put on the reload. Okay, he's dead. This is honestly a really sweet game. Uh, okay, I want to one B. Get the speed up. AFK player. Gotta love it. My shell. Quite a high roll. This yo is gonna take off like all his health, so I'm just gonna ignore him. Got a one to one B in the back. Maybe we can shoot him. Excuse me, E4. Dude, dude, can, dude, can you, dude, what? Okay. Dude, please. Come on. Thank you. 121V, I believe, has, yeah. Please. Okay, whatever. I was gonna say, didn't pen. Could have been a thousand, but you know, it is what it is. We did pretty good this game. Uh, I'll, I'll have to stop the recording quickly to get game audio. Come on, damage! Damage! Yes! Oh, interesting. Okay, so... It it works. Um, this, this game requires essentially... Six keys. Three for your shells, and then three for your consumables. Plus a fourth one if you are using uh, special game mode for abilities. 
As for whether this can support any more, I, I would say can support probably a max of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, reasonably. And if you use control keys or something, maybe, and also space. So yeah, it can work, I suppose. Let's try one more, but I might need to use my ability more. So let me quickly go swap that out. <clears throat> All right, and we are back for video feed, and that should mean we have game audio now. So that's great. Um, let's try something like the 30B now. For reference, the 30B is probably... Well, I can't call it the worst medium, but it's not great because of stuff like the MX update. It's going to be pretty damn nice. Um, all right, so... Double colors, Let's go. Carrot and missile. So we are basically completely right when it comes to that side. Okay, so I I don't know what ability the bow has, I don't remember. Um, I'm just gonna sit on this bush. Just wait a second. Um, so, oops, I completely did not realize that the game audio was that loud and you couldn't hear me at all, so oops. But I'm basically gonna remove the game audio here just to kind of explain what's happening. So, this game you obviously are in a tank, and in a tank you have tracks. So if your track gets shot, it's like if you lose a wheel. So what I'm doing, so what happens here is I get tracked and I need to press the key to fix my tracks, but because I'm using this keyboard, it is the same key, but because of the ortholinear's shape, I don't have the muscle memory for that, so that's how this happened. does work. Um, I'm sure if you played with this for long enough, it does work. Or something like, I suppose, Minecraft? That might be an interesting prospect, because something like Minecraft... Um, right, you need a lot of keys for the image stuff. I don't know if this one has enough for Minecraft. You might have to get a specific amount of that. Damn, we lost that fast. That's a sweep. Okay, we'll do one more, and then we'll head over to it. Also because... <laughs> Okay, so to quickly summarize the experience, yes, this keyboard can work for gaming. It has enough keys such that most games, most common games, you're going to be okay with it. However, if you're playing a game that requires a lot of keys, like an MMO, or even something like Minecraft, which you have a lot of inventory slots, it may be more difficult. I would recommend though, in general, if you were to get a keyboard like this, make sure you have a mouse with at least, at the very least, like two, two macro keys that you can rebind. So overall, yeah, this keyboard will work. Okay, so with the casual stuff over, let's see how well this performs in more, let's say, task specific activities. Okay, so it has been about three weeks since I started this challenge. And to quickly recap, the first week I spent mostly basically learning the layout, even though I made it myself. And the second week is where I basically spent the time just practicing getting used to the layout and using it in day-to-day -day use, along with of course setting that quote-unquote world record. Now we are in the third week, so this is where I will start using it for actual typing testing. So this will be, say, trying to see if I can match my words per minute, which have been increasing in the past couple weeks, as well as using it in some more fun aspects, just to see if it can actually handle it. So what we're going to be doing today is a site called Typing2. I highly recommend it. It's in Japanese, but there are some English songs, which I'm going to basically try. Now, one of the biggest problems I've noticed with this that I can't believe I didn't realize sooner is that it doesn't have a number row. 
Now, of course, that may be obvious to you. You, of course, realize the number I was chopped off. That's pretty obvious. What may not immediately be apparent is the fact that your exclamation point, for example, is your number one key. So, for a lot of these sentences that has exclamation point, you can't type it. So I had to go in and fix my layout from that. That was a bit awkward. Furthermore, with regards to the layout itself, I've gotten a bit more used to typing numbers, but it's still a little, mo a little bit more inconvenient. However, if you've used number pads or numpads for a while, you'll probably be fine. Seriously? I swear there was more. I think I may- oh, yeah, this one's stay alive. I realized I didn't really give an intro to what this game sort of is, so while I'm doing it, let me sort of give it an intro to this. So this is Typing Tube, and it is a rhythm-ish, rhythm-not game, in which you basically type the lyrics of the song. It's pretty fun, I would recommend it. It's more interesting than typing just repeated quotes in monkey type, I guess. Although I suppose they are a lot less steep. I haven't been using my regular keyboard just to see what would happen if I swap between them. Generally, it's fine. Um, some of the keys are, of course, different, so you will have to get used to that if you do swap keyboards. Definitely a shift key position is still nicer on my keyboard on the uh, KBO keyboard. However, I actually find that I'm able to burst type a bit faster due to the closer keys, and I explained that earlier about the comfort benefits in terms of the key depths and stuff. The key that's most annoying would be by far the Z, and I, as I just mentioned, putting capital letters. It's usable, But it's just a bit annoying. Now as for my thoughts right now to whether I could fully use this. It's mixed. It will work. But I feel like if you were to play some games. Oh, such as like, let's say Valorant or Counter-Strike. You would need to rely on your mouse's macro keys a lot more. But for games, casual games, that doesn't really need macro keys, you're going to be fine using this. Now, I would love to test the latency on this keyboard, but unfortunately, I don't really have the tools to do so. But do know that latency on custom keyboards can be spotty sometimes. Uh, just search up like the Glorious... I believe it was the Glorious Moto O. Uh, sorry, Glorious uh, GMNK Pro that had like a latency problem. I could be wrong. I'll, I'll put it up when I'm editing. Okay, so it was the GMNK Pro, but it turned out to just be a Glorious issue, their software, which kind of makes sense. Uh, most hardware nowadays, 100, 1000 polling hertz, it's not much of a latency problem. So um, in case the keyboard does that, you can usually just flash it with QMK and it should fix it unless your polling rate on your keyboard is actually really, really bad. Man, that Z, that Z is awkward. I, I actually really much prefer the period on this since it's a lot closer compared to on my Iris keyboard. And actually I'm typing way faster. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, for sentences, at least. For editing wise, um, this keyboard has worked okay. Again, the. Um, the Ctrl Z, copy, paste, etc. is definitely a little bit less intuitive, but it does work. And that's kind of mainly the important thing. As a quick side note, like, I never used Via before this, and I didn't really know why people liked it so much. 
But now that I've used this, man, it's awesome. The fact that you can just change it on the fly, it'll stay there. It's really amazing. If you haven't upgraded to VI yet, highly recommend. Okay, so that was the sentences test. Uh, I don't usually use that website, but it is more fun to do than just, say, spamming monkey type quotes. And I suppose type racer is an alternative, but I don't really do typing races. That's something I should change, but you know, I'm working on it. So now we're gonna go on to the classic monkey type daily practice, you could say. Um, since I started this challenge, I did use my regular keyboard because I felt that I could break my previous records. And about a week ago, I got my two best PVs, which you can see here. I'm at uh, 194.15 seconds, almost 200. We're gonna get there. And 175 for 60 seconds. That's a huge jump, and I'm quite happy about it. But the funny thing is, uh, I have the graph, I'll pull it up in editing. The thing is, it would have been a 180 PV on 30 seconds, which is also really cool. So anyways, let's see if the ortholinear keyboard can hold up to my iris keyboard. That is quite rough, I won't lie. Okay, I'm turning on the pacer. That's one also other annoying thing. I can't actually click escape to access like the shortcut console. I have to uh, scroll through to find it. And sometimes I just pop up the on-screen keyboard because it's so much more annoying. Yeah, there it is, okay. Um, we're just gonna set this at 180, because I don't even know if I can do 190. This is honestly really weird. It's like, sometimes it works amazing, and then sometimes it really doesn't. It could be just because of the fact that I switch back and forth between the keyboards, so... Because you saw on the quote unquote world record video, I went 180, 382, something like that, for 50 words, which would be more than enough for 15 seconds, but like now I'm struggling. While I still have the stamina, I'm gonna actually do something interesting. Uh, I struggle a lot with bursting on this layout, and I felt that maybe it wasn't the layout and it could just be the iris keyboard. So let's try that quickly. I still haven't hit that like level or familiar but familiarity with this layout such that I can, you know, kind of like, it's hard to describe. It's like you're typing in a fluid manner. I still haven't hit that, so that may be what's limiting my speed, but whether I want to spend time to learn that, eh, we'll see. That's rough, but the raw was 211. Okay, I'm gonna stop wasting my stamina, but yeah, you can see it works. Um, I'm sure if I review my hand cam later, I can point out what mistakes were happening, but it it is still not great, I guess is the best way to say it. So after going through the hand cam, essentially what was happening in this case was, like I mentioned earlier, because of the fact that these ortholinear keyboards, they don't have that stagger. Even on my split keyboard, I tend to face it inward so I get like, you know, that natural uh, upside down V shape. I keep missing keys when I have to shift from row to row. No, that sucks! Oh wait, that wasn't as fast as I, I genuinely thought that was 200. Yeah, from that experience... Uh, I don't like it as much as the iris. 
but you do see my raw, it's, it's up there. We start with 200, dip a little, but goes back up to 200. We did break 180, so it will work. Let's take a look at 60 seconds. I'm gonna reduce the pace all the way down to 160, cause I... even 160, but we should, we should. So this is kind of a long, boring section, so I, I thought I might as well just update you guys on uh, what's happening, I suppose, in my typing journey since the 100 words per minute. That 100 words per minute video, it was my in initial um, experience with this layout. And from that time, I've gotten 140, 150, 160, and as I recently mentioned, 175. Uh, I just want to give, I guess, a little update on how the layout feels. Now that I, I am getting up into the really high words per minute ranges, I, I can safely say that it's uh, not that bad. I still wouldn't really recommend this layout. This is still a very... Uh, you could call it in the depths layout when you really get into the hobby. Take it as you will, but it, it works. I just want this to serve as kind of a reminder to tell you guys that you can use any layout you want and you can get pretty good with it. I believe uh, the world's fastest type is for now, Mythical Rocket. He actually likes Cordy the most. Okay, yeah, I mean, we, we got to 170 on... No, I'll do a 30 second to prove it. But we got to 170. It works. Um, the hardest thing I will say is that this keyboard, it's hard for me to, I guess, relax on it when I'm typing at this higher speed. On a good keyboard, if you know what I'm talking about, you feel kind of like... You, you feel kind of relaxed, right, when you get into that zone. This keyboard, I feel basically constant strain on my wrist. In the video where I basically explained that you have to tilt your um, hands inwards or put your arms uncomfortably, it, it's, it's not ideal, but as you can see, it can work. Well, surprise, surprise, yeah, it worked. I mean, it's just a keyboard after all. The reason I primarily made this video is twofold. One, I wanted to test out this still sort of wacky layout that has kind of died over the past couple of years. I mean, just look at the Plank Easy, which sadly is no longer. The simple reason that I can give for this is that most people are simply moving on to split keyboards, and I hope this video sort of demonstrated why. I voiced a lot of what I was thinking while doing those quote-unquote tests, but in essence the main issue is there's a learning curve. It doesn't really feel natural right off the bat. I mean, sure, split keyboards are similar for some people, but in my personal experience, I didn't nearly have as much of a problem. Not only do the letter keys feel off, so too do the functional keys, control, alt, function, are all where they are supposed to be, yes, but because of the stagger are quite off muscle memory wise. Now you may notice that I haven't talked a lot about comfort or complained about the lack of keys. The reason for this is that, well, for keys, you can just buy a bigger keyboard. I used layers during this challenge, and honestly, yeah, they were fine, but nothing beats simply more keys. However, if I had to use layers, I could get away with them. As for comfort, I do have strong opinions on this, just watch my previous ortholinear keyboard video. But I understand that this is still subjective. If you have smaller hands or even just a bigger keyboard, many of the problems don't really happen. I still stand by the fact that a split keyboard is simply just better, but it is ultimately up to you. In the end, I've made this little chart here that hopefully will help you decide on whether or not you may want to try out this forgotten, fun, literal keyboard.